So what's the name of our show again? <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> the Joe Rogan Show. The Joe it? Rogan Show, that's right. <laughs> Welcome to the Joe Rogan Show. Yeah. Joe Rogan will not be joining us today. <laughs> Joe rogan list show. The Joe rogan list show. That's what we're going to yeah. change our name to. Uh, so let's just dive right this in. Is a this is a perfect business venture. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We shouldn't have any problems with uh, branding or anything like Since that. Since I kind of want that in the show, we're going to just start and intro it with the Not Joe Rogan Show. Okay. Sound good? <laughs> it's, fine. It's, fine. it's accurate. Hello, everybody, and welcome to AMZ Seller Real Talk. That's the name of the show, right? I don't know. We already said Joe Rogan Show, so. Joe Rogan List Show. The Joe Rogan List Show. Yeah. Otherwise known as the AMZ Seller Real Talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. So, again, seems like it's common practice right now that we uh, are missing your wife, and instead we get stuck with you. I know. I'm sorry, Tomer, but you you cannot gaze upon the beauty of my wife. You have to look at my rugged face. Yeah, that mug my, over there. Yeah, this. <laughs> That's okay. Everything <laughs> looks good in these lockdowns, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, it's yeah. true. <laughs> Another human. Hello. Uh, connection. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Um, so we have our guest, uh, Tomer, with us. Tomer, sorry. Um, and um, Danan, why don't you uh, kind of take the lead on this yeah. one? Because if we're being totally honest, we you, just finished SellerCon, which is this big event for sellers. And I don't know what I'm doing here. Good. I don't know anything about anything. So good. Danan, All right. or Justin, or John, we're gonna, or Bob. A okay. little backstory here, Tomer. <laughs> um, when I started at Managed by Stats, you know me as Danan, which is what, you know, we met, what, 2018 in China, I think like that? Something like that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I didn't want everyone knowing that I worked at Manage My Stats because I've been a seller for 10 years as well. So I went by my first name, which is Justin, and, but now it's all gotten con confused, yeah. because Super confused. now I, I also do the shows and he calls me Danan, my wife calls me Danan. Unless she's, she's mad at you, then she calls you Justin. Then she calls me. Well, there's there a whole, other there's words, a whole string yeah, of other names she calls me, but you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we met. Tomer and I met in China, and he is was and still is a uh, consultant. So you help sellers vastly increase their sales. He's like, yep, eh, that's, that's uh, one way. That's to correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so much so that he has something called the Top Dog Summit, which you founded in 2017, right? Right, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. so it was pretty fresh when you and I met. You had just, you just started that, and I remember you showing pictures, and there were like 100 people there or something like that, or yeah. more. No, actually, 2017, we only had like 20 people. <laughs> oh, that no, but when you felt like 100. Uh, but you showed yeah, me the pictures. The, no, with the speakers and everything, we had a bit more. Uh, but yeah, it grew and grew year by year. So yeah, that and also those uh, yeah, that Photoshop a, that photos. event is for like top sellers. And uh, this year, like last year, we had to push it due to COVID to this year, and maybe yeah. we'll have to push it again. Yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, because that event is all about networking, so doing it virtually doesn't make a lot of sense. You should do it yeah. in Dubai. Yeah. Apparently, Dubai doesn't close down. Well, so you know, or come to Florida, or come we're, to Florida. We're, we're open. open. Yeah, and we'll we got beaches. Happily help. Well, I'll we just get beaches, people yeah. to my house. That's yeah. Oh yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, one-on-one <laughs> -on -one sessions. That's right. So yeah. I, I'd like to kind of cover, you know, who are you? Where did you get your start? And what are you doing now? And and how is it? And why is it that you're able to have started Top Dog Top Dog Summit and gone to the level of success uh, that you're at now? Because I know how successful you are. I know you know, based on our conversations, that you're well well above many people's other areas. And that's all That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> well above <laughs> other people's areas. Yeah, in yeah. That doesn't sound about Amazon at all. Yeah, no, 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 we could be talking about golf, actually. We are. Parcheesi. Are we Isn't this? He's a professional Parcheesier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. But yeah, so I, I know that your success is, is- Far and wide. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, cool. Tell me about yourself and where you started. Yeah, so I actually started with ASM uh, back mm -hmm. in 2014. That's the course I did. I started selling in early 2015. I uh, quit my job in 2016 and have been doing it since then full time. Mm -hmm. uh, for the past uh, three years, I've started also consulting uh, big sellers, like over uh, seven figures and higher. Um, and also I have my own events and also like a small mastermind tech train as well. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, it's been exciting. And I think uh, my best skill maybe is to really simplify uh, complex uh, tasks and processes and things like that, which I think when I started, we really only had ASM like as a mm-hmm. course to like uh, follow and everything. Now I think it's uh, you have too much information. Like you yeah. don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah. Uh, you type in like how to choose a product and good luck. Yeah. Uh, there is so much information around that you don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah. And so a lot's antiquated. I don't envy those that start today. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of that information uh, is antiquated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and SolarCon was great. I spoke at SolarCon uh, in 2019. I also spoke mm-hmm. uh, this year as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, that was a great experience as always. So I, before doing any of this stuff, I used to be a magician. Uh, I was a full-time magician. That's, uh, that's awesome. what I used to do. So um, that's why I'm pretty comfortable on stage and everything. So yeah. I've been doing what that are the chances you have a magic old. performance ready for us? <laughs> Just out of What's curiosity. What, you say? what are the chances you have a small performance ready for us on podcast? Yeah, sure. So Danin's wife, please come in. <laughs> uh, <good. laughs> I can. <laughs> That's why that she's not on the that show. Would that would be. That, that would, I'd be very impressed if she walked in the door right now. I'd be like, "Well, it was great talking to you, Tomer. I gotta go." Yes. <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I That's cut you my off. So the spot trick. That's yeah. right. <laughs> cool. So then uh, you performed it. You did not perform. You <laughs> talked at SellerCon. Um, Carry on. Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, so that's kind of how I started. And I uh, like my first product was doing like 50K a month. I'm one of those guys that I think were just lucky, honestly, because yeah. then I thought, oh, this is easy. I'm going to launch like a bunch more products. I launched four more products and they all failed yeah. <laughs> miserably. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so I think that tends to happen to a lot of sellers. I think like once you get a good hit with a product, you tend to like go all over the place, like launch different products, different brands. Because uh, you think you know what you're doing, but at yeah. the end of the day, you don't really. So um, I think like a lot of sellers don't really focus on uh, the good products that they have, and they kind of trace like other opportun- like other shiny objects. I would say, yeah, like a Shopify store and expand to Europe and a whole bunch of other things. Sure, yeah. So uh, Guil- yeah, guilty. I realized like <laughs> then that I have to like go deeper with my uh, brands and everything, and that's kind of what I did. Cool, so, awesome. Yeah. All right, so I, I think there's a recurring theme here in all of the podcasts that, that we all do. of the consultants that talk about problems that Amazon sellers you've done? Well, there is, yes. Oh, so that wasn't the vein <laughs> no, you were going, okay. No, <laughs> no but, but to in order to achieve a level of success like Tomer has, that you follow a brand line. Yeah, you, one brand. Yeah, you don't go far and wide. Like, gosh, I mean, I, I've actually forgotten how many areas that I've, that I've been in. Uh, food, uh, vitamins, Outdoors, <laughs> candy, candy. All of those are related in some way. Digestive. Yeah. Yeah. All of those things you can, can be mention done though, while You can mention like yeah. the adult category you went in, and that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, that's right. Course. Oh, I forgot I told you about that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I oh wasn't. yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you leave that out of any description of things you've done. Weird. Yeah. Can't imagine that what. one. I was actually rather successful <laughs> for a while. Anyhow. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Tomer, for bringing that up. Yep. yep I'm yep. really uh, glad Danin you remembered has that. Had an adult brand. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying on with life. So. Yeah. So, so, but following a vertical, you know, go, go have a brand and follow that brand. And, you know, you're not the first, and I'm, I'm quite certain you're not going to be the last person to tell us that. Yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, we, we have, like I was telling you before we started the call, we have three seller accounts handmade, outdoors and vitamins, that's what we have going on right now. And, um, but even the handmade stuff can go into the outdoors because they're knives. But, you know, it's it's been my mistake to not do what you're saying. So please carry on with your wisdom. I am your student. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think it's up to you also. I think also new sellers kind of think uh, too heavily about this so they launch a product and they think oh this is going to be my brand from now and forever and mm. I have to kind of do this yeah well your first product is just your first product like if you are not if it's selling well and everything is okay and you don't really see more opportunities around that one product just start a new brand yeah. even under if you can do it under the same brand it's even better and then you will just like your first product is just like a one-off product because you kind of have had your test run on it and everything and you know the business now and then you can launch your actual brand yeah. afterwards, either under the same brand name, that's better. If not, a new brand name, that's fine. 
and we can all like you can run those on the same account it's completely okay to do uh, yeah. No one cares. I'm gonna like, predict uh, the future. If you sell your business at some point, no one cares about that. So, yeah. Right, right. I'm gonna predict the future really quick because we've already had this happen on the show one time. Is it in the regards to me? Power cord of the computer is not plugged in, so oh. I predict that in about 30 minutes time, <laughs> we're gonna have to end this podcast unless Dana decides. No, we should I will, probably handle that I will, really quick. Uh, handle but we're gonna keep on because yeah. that's just Please the way we do on. things. But if I could just ask you. Would you recommend to new sellers that rather than that when they start their first product that they go with something inexpensive to gain experience? Unless it of course it doesn't matter. So yeah, this is just again my own uh, it really depends on the person itself, I think. It really depends on their risk tolerance and how much money they have and everything. But yeah. a cheaper product can actually be much more expensive than an expensive product oh, to some extent. Like if you launch like an $80 product, like eight zero, that's not going to be necessarily very expensive because you might start with like 100, 150 units to get going sure. where like a $10 or $20 product, you will need a lot more. And usually those are a lot more competitive anyway. So I never look at price as sure. like a criteria to select products. I always go by the revenue of the products. Uh, the reviews, if it's like easy to get, start get going with like organic uh, sales as soon as possible with sure. a few reviews, that's more like what I look at. And I think uh, everyone is too fixated on the fact that you have to lo launch like a light, small, uh, relatively cheap product when you launch. And that's what everyone is doing. So I Fair enough. just that's recommend awesome. going the other way. Uh, like we have products that we are selling that are under like 12, even under $10 and are doing amazingly well. And people will tell you, look, those are not profitable. Those are actually very profitable. Right. Uh, like the ROI on those is insane. And the expensive products usually have a much worse ROI, but the margin is right. very high. Like yep. the dollar margin per unit is very high. So I tend to go either low or high, but we also have obviously products in the middle um, that are also doing really well. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't really care if I sell one unit a month for $10,000 or 10,000 units for $1. Yeah, that's I mean, it's awesome. the same ten thousand dollars, and if the profit, let's say, is the same, then who cares, right? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm well, okay, because you're already going against half of the ASM picking criteria. Actually, you know, they've evolved their picking criteria a lot. Yeah. So I know that there's a lot about kind of like what they suggest that you should do. That is that has evolved a lot. Again, I think all of that criteria. I think it's fine. Yeah. For your first product, I think that's okay to kind of get going and understand the methodology, and you don't want to start with like an oversized product without knowing Amazon, obviously. Yeah or uh, launching like a very cheap product where you don't know PPC, right? Yeah. But once you get going with even one product, even if it fails, you already know Amazon. So right. you can then do whatever you want. And I tend to recommend everyone to go kind of against the curve then, uh, yeah. Well, okay, because you bring uh, because up- everyone good... is kind of looking for the same products. And if you do find that perfect product, it's gonna be saturated tomorrow morning anyway. Yeah. Right. So you bring up a good point, knowing Amazon, um, because you know someone who's green might not really know what that consists of. What what are, I guess, some of the criteria that you would say you need to have mastered in order to quote, know Amazon? Uh, if you cried in the corner multiple times, like, <laughs> you know Amazon pretty well. I know Amazon uh, pretty well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think like everyone thinks that Amazon is doing bad things to them specifically. Maybe yeah. to Dane and that's correct, but for the rest of us, uh, I think you know, kind of agree to that. Uh, but that kind of happens to everyone. Like yeah. you know, yeah. getting listings suspended for no reason, accounts getting shut down, yeah. reviews getting deleted, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, I think it's just because Amazon is too big. If you ask me, they are right. too busy. Like uh, yeah. my favorite question to sellers is, how do you think Amazon wants us to launch products? Um, and no one really knows <laughs> the yeah. answer. Wow. And I my thinking is that they don't really care because they are too big right now. They're mm -hmm. too busy putting out fires all day. So I think that's one of the main issues with Amazon, they don't care how we launch because they already have like too many of us, like in a, like not too many of us, but they have a lot going on anyway. So yeah. they don't need to bother with like, think how we are gonna launch products on their platform. Like I think, uh, yeah. really review program, great. I get five reviews and then what do I do? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, this yeah. is this is definitely a theme. You, you've hit the nail on the head. This is definitely a theme. So I, my wife and I, we do uh, news every, uh, e-commerce news every two weeks. Yeah. And this is a common theme that we're seeing is that people like Amazon has done this to me and, and it's true, but hell, even we say it in news. E yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it isn't Amazon doing it. Some 
AI has gone out. They've someone has coded AI or a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Someone's gone out and coded and say said if if any of these criteria are met, then suspend the account, suspend the listing, suspend whatever the product because it meets these pri- criteria of that's not allowed. And so Amazon has a, an operating basis of hit first and don't bother asking questions later. I, I also think that that's going to become very interesting in the coming weeks. So depending on when we show this, we're going to date ourselves because currently it is February 4th. Whether we release it February 4th is probably a whole nother matter. Of course. But uh, did, did I know you say Jeff, what year we are on? Yeah. Or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. We could release this February 4th, 2022. That's true. Um, Jeff but no, Bezos last I, I'm going to dip exactly. And that's the point I'm going to bring up yeah, yeah. is um, Jeff Bezos just announced he's stepping down as CEO. Yep. And we saw how that, ha- uh, what effects that's had on other businesses. Like look at how Apple has evolved since Steve Jobs passed away. Right. So we're about to probably see a very interesting shift. Cause let's face it, Jeff was probably sick and freaking tired of going in front of Congress and having his just, his just, head shredded yeah so i i'm i'm very yeah. interested to see what changes amazon makes now that you've removed kind of the soul from yeah. the ceo position yeah granted he's still gonna be part of the board but we might even see some very interesting changes with amazon as a whole now that it's going to become even more corporate than it was before yeah, yeah. i honestly <laughs> if that's like, possible we don't know, right yeah what will happen um yeah, my opinion, honestly, is just it's going to stay pretty much the same as it mm-hmm. is right now in terms of how they treat sellers and how they put the customer first and everything, all of that. Yeah, I think also they can afford doing that because they don't really have any real competition at the moment. Yeah, that's very like true. They are, being honest. Everyone else is so far away from them. Like if you combine yeah. the next top 10, they are not even coming close to Amazon. Yeah. So yeah. I think they are so far ahead of everyone. They can do whatever they want. They can. And we are still going to stay because... Um, we don't have like i would would never choose a different partner than amazon i think it's the best partner you could ever yeah. have yep and this uh day and age especially with COVID going on and everything else uh and you know i see like sellers trying to go into retail and shopify and everything i'm, I'm like you could do that before amazon why do yeah. you do that now <laughs> like yeah this is the best business model you could ask and then you go and open a retail store or put your products there so I think sellers are too rushed to kind of dominate <laughs> role domination or something yeah. uh, when they didn't even scratch the surface with Amazon. Yeah. And I think, again, that's another thing that sellers don't really look at. And they think like, oh, I have like a um, high conversion rate and low sessions. I need some Facebook traffic, some Instagram traffic. I'm like, no, you just need to optimize your listing right. because then mm-hmm. you're going to get a lot more sessions. Uh, that's what's going to move the sessions up and not <laughs> yep. going like all over the place. Yep, makes sense. Uh, yeah, so then uh, sounds to me like you're saying then have a brand, stick to it, make sure your listings are optimized. And don't be stupid, stupid. Don't be, <laughs> and, and know how to do PPC. And you just touched on that very briefly. And but it's, it's also the second speaker in a row that said that exact that's same right. thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and we talk to each other. The speakers in this show, we always yeah. talk yeah. to each other. That's the magic. <laughs> I didn't realize I made my calendar public. Good, I will get on changing that. <laughs> Yeah. No, with PPC, I think PPC is uh, honestly like over the years, over like every, like while we speak right now, they added five new features. Yeah. yeah. So I think PPC is changing so rapidly right now and it became a profession. Like if you go on LinkedIn yeah. and you type in Amazon PPC expert, you're just going to see a whole bunch of like Pakistan people, experts in PPC now or mm-hmm. whatever, but it really became a profession right now. So I think, um, I think you can either, the, like, you have to learn it by yourself, like yeah. the basics but I would recommend to outsource that as soon as possible, either to, uh, even if you outsource to an agency or to a service, like uh, whatever automatic service or whatever it is, you still need to really know what's going on. This yeah. is your biggest spend after your inventory cost. Uh, you have to know what's going on in your PPC. You have to understand it because if sales go down and you don't know what's going on in the back, back end and you wanna fire the agency, it. you wanna fire that yeah. employee yeah. or whatever it is, you're gonna be left empty handed. So. Um, I think that's so important to really understand PPC on a, I would say even a deep level to understand it. And if it's not you that understands it, you need to have someone on your team 
that understands it like in-house. Yeah. Very interesting um, that you should it's say all so this. It's so funny that he mentions that. Yeah. Well, um, the reason that we're taking this opportunity to shamelessly, you know, <sighs> place some advertising. No, we, we actually just released a PPC course. Full, like right now it's free. We'll yeah. see if it remains that way. We're kind of internally debating. Um, just because exactly the point that you're talking about, PPC is such an ever evolving beast. We've, um, we've shot a number of modules of this PPC course and we're basically gonna keep shooting them until we cover every single fundamental topic, each yeah. ad type, some basic strategies. But like you said, um, we have more and more features being added by the second. So we're gonna keep that course up to date. And it's good because the reason we did that is exactly the problem you're referring to. We also have a PPC ad agency called PPC Logic, um, but some people that go over there don't know what really are the fundamentals of PPC. So we right. figured, hey, we put together a course well, that'll some, teach some of these Some of them haven't even figured out the fundamentals of optimizing a listing. Yeah. That's right. You know, and so and and if you don't have an optimized listing, and then you do PPC, you're wasting a significant portion, probably most of yeah, your money. Yeah, it's like the bucket with the holes, right? You cannot yeah. fill it up with water until you black all the holes. Yeah. yeah. So it's exactly the same. I when I consult, I always the first thing we always do is optimize the listings. Yeah. That's like the first thing you have to do before talking about traffic or even like I see sellers launching products when their listing is not fully optimized and that's a real shame, you know, because mm -hmm. they launch their listing, they launch their product and they don't like have all the images up or whatever, <laughs> or they don't like whatever they have, like almost ready. It's not ready yet. And then they spend all this money on giveaways and launching the product and yeah. then it's failing. And then they, Oh, maybe it's because the listing is not optimized <laughs> and they update it and then they need to relaunch or whatever yeah. it is. So it's uh, and never end your circle. So what we do is we, cl we keep our listing closed until we are actually ready with everything and the stock in place. And then we actually launch the product yes. properly. So my wife, what she'll do is she'll build out the entire listing content wise on, uh, on a document. Cause one of the things that we've seen and tell me if you've seen this too, is that you'll update a listing or you upload all of your content to a listing. You make some changes and then, and then it reverts back at some point. Have you seen that? We've had that with a few of our listings. Yeah, that, that can happen, but if you use like a flat file or if you talk to support, you can usually get yeah. it fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, relatively fast. I yeah. honest to God yeah, but just think you've pissed off the Amazon gods. That's, That's actually what I think. Entirely possible. Yeah. <laughs> I do that yeah. to a lot of people. It's no big deal. All right. Yeah, no, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Bezos so now has time to listen to this podcast. You know, so yeah, <laughs> that's <knows>? right. <laughs> cool. Uh, so then yeah. that, that all makes sense. So know your basics, know know that get it get deep knowledge if you can but then outsource when it comes to ppc um so that you don't have to spend all the time on it i'm assuming yes yeah i think like any business when you think about any business yeah we all start doing by doing everything ourselves mm -hmm. right uh, almost like uh, i don't expect anyone to like uh <laughs> produce the products themselves or yeah. source the products themselves or yeah. copy the copy and graphic design all that is outsourced always yeah but when it comes to um uh ppc things like that those can be outsourced relatively quickly and not for a very high cost i think mm -hmm. uh, and then you should really start uh thinking about your team like uh i think again all the courses just teach you uh launch products right launch yeah. products a bit of ppc a bit of inventory management so you keep launching products and then it's just like you cannot manage it anymore. Yeah, right. Like uh, full time is not enough. And then you oh, so I need to start hiring, or I need to like uh, make SOPs, or I need to like do something. You don't really know what to do. So that's exactly what I teach. Got it. Uh, that's awesome. So then I guess uh, when you sit down with someone, what's kind of like the, I guess the most common problem that you end up seeing. So the most common problem is probably someone is telling me, look, I work sixteen hours a day, and I want to launch these five products. I'm like. So you need to launch some employees instead and have systems in place mm -hmm. and relax a bit, work less because people, uh, that's another reason people sell their businesses, I think, is because they are burnt out right. and they cannot really manage this anymore. Yeah. Uh, but if you actually have a team in place uh, and systems and you know what happens before what and you have like an entire pipeline, a pipeline of things, it's so much easier. Um, Makes sense. And uh, yeah, no one, I don't know why, but no one really talks about this stuff. Well, okay. Um, so I that's... think uh, it all starts, I would say, with your first hire, the first person you hire. Uh, that's a mistake I made. So 
when you hire someone, you usually hire someone for either customer service or PPC or something. Mm -hmm. But honestly, when you first hire someone, there is not that much to do, right? There is like one hour a day to do customer service or something. So, uh, and you think about like a company, so you think I'm going to have positions in my company. I'm going to have this person doing product research, this person customer service, social media, inventory management, all of these people. But the problem is they all report to you and they're all doing like a poor job or whatever. And you have to do go yeah. in and fix it yourself. Yeah. So that's not a good strategy. A better strategy would be to hire someone. You can start with customer service, but tell them during the interview that you want them to manage people in the future. You mm. want to grow their role in your company until it becomes big enough to also manage other people underneath doing the same things that they are doing and they're only going to manage them in the future. Okay. That way, if you build it this way, you only need to really manage two or three people and they kind of manage the rest of the team and you end up with a middle level of managers in your team, okay. which no seller has. Sellers usually have a lot of people reporting to them. Yeah. Okay. And it starts with like freight forwarder, supplier, uh, graphic designer, copywriter, all those people reporting to you. And that's fine, obviously, those are freelancers. Yeah. But as you grow, as you build up your team, you need to have that middle tier of managers underneath those, the employees. And the employees are the ones talking and outsourcing all of the other stuff to experts, to freelancers that actually know what they're doing. So in a way, you're kind of looking for someone who's willing to occupy that higher position and you're sort of weeding them out if they kind of shy away from that yeah yeah i, I mean if someone is one, one to, wants to be an entrepreneur at some point and build their own business this is not for them i want right. someone who's going to stay long term in my company and everything and my team is filipino based and um that that's great you can also like what i recommend to a lot of people if they don't really uh hit it off with the philippines or whatever uh like cheap country you can say I would highly recommend hiring someone local. Mm -hmm. This can be like a college graduate who is very sharp, intuitive, intelligent and everything and have them kind of build this business uh, overseas cool. or even like, again, locally if you want, but it cannot be you. It cannot be, you right. cannot run the operations in your own business, I think, long term at the beginning yeah. for sure. It might take a year, two, three years to build this out. But if you do this correctly, you can sell the business and then keep the team and build another one and another one and just... Uh, rinse and repeat, right? That's awesome. Very good point. Yeah, I like that. So that's a that's a huge tip that we haven't actually had someone say on the show. So Very that's true. nice. It's funny because let's be honest, a lot of the things that we hear on the show, even though we're only like ten episodes in, there's a lot of repeat. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> which tells me that those are a lot of the fundamentals yes. that apply, no matter what. But yeah. also, so since we're kind of touching on a subject matter that we haven't really you know, dove into very deeply. Let's dive in deeper. So like Divin, dove, Divin in, Divin in, dove, in. No, dive, dive, none of those. Yeah. dive, did, Driving dive, did. Yeah, 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 drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's just change the mode of transportation let's, here. Let's sink to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, in terms of structure or in terms of organization, let's dive a little deeper. Now, obviously we don't want you to give away, you know, your whole business by telling all of your, you know, secrets, but what's another area that you see in the area of organization and structure? That would be something that would be just kind of like a good uh, warning or tip to give someone. Yeah, so I think again, when you think about a team, you think, okay, so I have a team in place. What do we do all day? What do we do every day? We wake up and then what do I do? Also sellers, right? You wake mm -hmm. up and what do I do now? <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, when I quit my job, I had like this, like when I had a job, I was so busy that I was very efficient, right? With my business. Cause I knew I had like two, three hours a night to like work on the business. When I quit, I had this like huge hole <laughs> throughout the day. I didn't yeah. know what to do yeah. with all this free time. And I think that's a gap with a lot of sellers. Like you launch a product and you're like, what do I do? Okay, so it's running, I have PPC, I have like, what do I do? So uh, that's one thing. Uh, and the way to kind of work with that is to kind of write down everything you need to have in this business uh, anything from you know customer support and listing optimization, tracking the keywords, reviews, everything there is to do with like optimizing the product um, and inventory management and PPC, all of that you need to have figured out. And then you need like a machine to launch new products. Mm -hmm. When I say a machine, this just means you need a clear pipeline. What happens like after I do research? What do I give a green light to a product and what's a red light to okay. a product? How do I? What is the approval process? And you need to know what that is. Uh, not unlike um, just a calculation level, but you need to say, if I see these five things, it continues on to like talking to suppliers. Okay, got it. If that happens, then I continue. Now, even if you have all of that in place, that is still not enough because you kind of know what happens before what, but then you need like a task management system 
And those are softwares like Asana, like Monday, mm -hmm. um, Trello, like whatever task management tool you want to use. And again, no one talks about this stuff. Yeah, um, very true. But it doesn't really matter what task management tool you use. Uh, you really need to have one because that is kind of going to organize all everything you need in really one place uh, that you go in every day and you see the tasks, the daily tasks you have, the weekly tasks, monthly tasks, projects you are working on, like launching another product. Um, and also you want to plan throughout like your year or six months, three months goals and all of that stuff is very important as well, yeah. I believe. Um, so yeah, task management tools are important. I go even like in my programs, I go like even to more detail on how to keep and organize your files in Google Drive. And like we That's go awesome. into a lot of detail because everything is important. Everything is like, you waste so much time on these things, you know, like if you have employees, you probably told them like 10 times your address to ship samples to you. Right. But if you have that information, like in one place yeah. where, where they see all of the information of your company and always have access for it, it's so much easier to manage. So that makes a lot uh, of there sense. There are multiple things you need to have which is like tasks, your uh, files, information, even decision-making, you need to have it figured out. So for us, like all the decision-making is done in spreadsheets that give us a, a green light or a red light, depending on different criteria. And that's how we do things. Cool. Wow, that's awesome. Well, this, this is definitely uh, on a new level for, yeah. for our sellers because we've, we've never talked about organization. Well, and I think also this is probably the way we're going to start diving in because like, it's so funny when you start a podcast, you kind of think, oh yeah, you know, we're just going to get to know this person and you forget. Yeah. My that. other tip is like do the PPC, you know, that's the yeah. other tip I have yeah. for everyone. Good. Yeah, that, that one's that one's super simple. People do PPC. Yeah. That's all, that don't, <laughs> don't not do yeah. it. Yeah. Forget about everything else. <laughs> Don't even have a product, just do PPC. Yeah, it's just gonna work PPC. out fine. Even without a Sell Central account, just yeah, go ahead and just do, it. do yeah. PPC. Yeah, just start paying. Somewhere else, <laughs> pay someone. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, so that's, and that that's actually why we we created our PPC course is because we start at the very, very base and we actually start by the words, you know, define yeah. the words, what does it mean? You know, because if you don't know, then you don't know the rest of the subject because you don't even know what you're talking about, right. you know? And then you're just like parrot, like a parrot, like squawk. Yep. Yeah, totally. Do PPC, you know? And, uh, but you don't know how. So yeah, that's great advice. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, so my then, other, another thing I can mention to everyone is uh, when I used, when I started, I used to be known as like uh, the guy who knows all the hacks and tricks to kind of inside right. of Amazon. Yeah. Um, and I don't really do any of that anymore. I'm very TOS compliant, you can say. Mm -hmm. And I realized like after, I, and I met a lot of big sellers, that's kind of how, why I did my own event at some point, because I felt like I know enough people to do the event I wanted to go to. But the thing about the big sellers, they are very focused on even just a few things. So I created a program called Amazon Simplified, where we take the 10 biggest, like I call them like the big rocks in this business, and I just want them to be like solved, you know, for everyone to be completely simplified, anything from product section, sourcing, PPC, everything needs to be, you know, uh, straightened out kind of, Yeah. and have everyone talking on the same, you know, eye level and everything, everything needs to be super simplified. And yeah. then you can, everything is going to fall in place after that. So, and I so, think everyone is like trying to find like, how do I rank to page one? How do I like game the system? Well, instead try to work, like give Amazon what it wants. Right. Uh, that's a much healthier business. Amazon, again, is the best partner we can have. And they want what we want. They want good products to their customers. Yes. And they are going to reward us for that. So, so tell that's me. That's what I am for. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So would you, so would you send a new person to Amazon Simplified? Brand yeah, new? I would send anyone who is already live. Like I don't mm -hmm. teach like how to open an account or how to okay. create a shipment. Yeah, I yeah. assume everyone knows how to do that. <clears throat> but if you're already live, that's perfect. For you yeah cool definitely good and where the, where can they find out more about that uh if they go to my website uh tomirabinovich.com forward slash amazon dash simplified they can see there it's also under services on the website but also even before that just watch the free content on my site i have like yeah. full lectures from SellerCon, from different events i was on podcast this one is going to be on there mm -hmm. uh, so yeah everything is just goes up on the website all the free content i have which is a lot of stuff yep and then if you want more you can just sign up for the program Cool. And we'll we'll throw a link in the description mm -hmm. of this video so that cool. they can not try and figure out how to spell your last name. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> All right. So should we yeah. go over to the yeah. MBS side of things? Okay. So, um, Tomer, the way we run this is basically we give um, the broad... You know, for YouTube, for Apple Podcasts, all that stuff, the, the 
kind of the content that we've covered so far. We give that out to everyone, but then we hold the best, the juiciest, um, you know, the finer parts of the steak. We hold those for just our Managed by Stats subscribers, and that's available only in our Facebook group. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pretend like we're going to end this podcast and kind of like wrap up and say, Tomer, so great having you on the show. Make sure to do a five-star review. We don't want anything less than a five-star review because right. unlike Amazon, we can do that. I'm, uh, I'm actually just gonna <laughs> do my own magic trick. Oh boy. And just when I snap my fingers, everything's it's going gonna to go end. black. It's going to go black, <laughs> and then it'll carry on on the Facebook somewhere group. else. Tomer, thank you very much for <sighs> thank you so much for us. Ready for the snap? Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> All right, great, everybody. 